Live from KSAT 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but get ready for more gridlock on the northwest side because parts of 1604 will be closed for construction again this weekend. The closure in both directions starts tonight at 9 p.m. through Sunday afternoon. The eastbound lanes will basically be closed from La Quintera to Bitters Road and west from Northwest Military to Lock Hill Selma. RJ Marquez and photojournalist Adam Barasa wanted to see how long the drive takes with 1604 East open and closed on a Friday afternoon. It's a bit of a hot mess. But finishing tearing it up all over again. It's annoying. 1604. It is very bad. We've heard a lot about this Loop 1604 North Expansion Project. Obviously, for people that live in this area, it's been a major pain in the neck. These are the eastbound lanes here that are, that are going to be closed, basically from La Quintera Parkway all the way to Bitters Road. So we are already four and a half minutes in um, to our trip. I got friends that live over here, so every time I'm trying to come over here, it's taking forever to get here. It's affecting our business, and we have had a lot of people walk away. When we did this earlier, just on the highway, it took us six minutes to get from La Quintera to Bitters Road. It's only going to be delayed because we have another uh, stoplight. So we've now made it to Vance Jackson. We just keep growing and growing and the infrastructure has been able to keep up. If you want to get 30 minutes down the road, you typically need like an hour and a half, hour 45 minutes. Still have not gotten to Bitters Road and we're looking at now more than 13 minutes uh, that we've been on the frontage road. It's just taking forever. That's the most annoying thing. It's taking. We have made it to uh, Bitters Road, and it took us all of about 16 minutes total uh, to make it up here from La Quintera Parkway. And big surprise, we got another red light. You have to plan another 10 or 15 minutes into your day, but in the long run, hopefully by this time next year, my commute will be that much quicker. These closures are expected to stay in place here on 1604 until Sunday around 5 o'clock unless construction crews get done a little bit quicker. Now, TxDOT tells us some good news here that they will not have any of these closures during the Thanksgiving holiday and also limit these during Christmas. But still, it's going to be tough traffic troubles for a lot of people in this area. Reporting from the northwest side, RJ Marquez, KSAT told news. Patience needed. To other news now, a Medina County judge has been reprimanded by the state for harassing a female staffer through text messages. Records obtained by KSAT investigate show Precinct 3 Justice of the Peace Clyde Bubba House was ordered to go through sexual harassment training last month. Those records show House texted a female employee, quote, sometimes I have naughty thoughts about you, end quote. The woman who KSAT is not identifying filed a complaint with County HR on that same day. When confronted about the text by HR and an assistant district attorney, House told them it was, quote, the way she dresses, end quote. House now has to go through five hours of training in areas of sexual harassment and being courteous towards people while in his official capacity. Our KSAT investigates team did call Judge House today to get a comment from him. He did not respond. A local animal shelter says recent dog attacks have impacted options for one specific breed. The Converse Animal Shelter says American Staffordshire Terriers, known as pit bulls, have had a tough time finding homes. Many of the dogs at the no kill shelter have the breed listed on their kennel. A kennel tech says pit bulls have a stigma. That's not always true. It definitely comes back to the owner and how you are going to act when it comes to a pit bull or an, an aggressive pit bull. It Colossal says it takes time to build trust between the owners and the dogs. The number of World War II veterans dwindles daily, yet there are those like Lupe Suarez of New Braunfels, still a very lively 100 years old. Suarez fought in two of the war's bloodiest battles in Europe. Jesse DeGriado tells us how tomorrow the Purple Heart recipient will help honor all veterans. In his 20s, when he left New Braunfels and went to war, and now a decorated veteran at the age of 100, Lupe Suarez is the Grand Marshal of the Veterans Day Parade in his hometown. What do you think about being in the parade? I don't think much. <laughs> his family says that's just who he is. Take it from his grandson, Joseph Nunes. He deserves accolades, even though he doesn't want any of them. Rosalba Shero says for a time, her father didn't even want the disability benefits he'd earned. Now, I didn't 
No, I had to do what I had to do. Suarez had been in the second wave to hit the sands of Normandy. There were bodies already floating right by us, but I was I was a lucky one. Until his knee was badly wounded in the Battle of the Bulge. After passing out in the snow, Suarez felt the barrel of a gun poking at him. But before he opened his eyes... I kept saying, please be a GI, please be a GI, please be a GI. Thankfully, it was. For his sacrifice, Suarez earned a Purple Heart. He proudly shares by giving out Purple Heart pins every chance he gets. Other than that... I don't give it any thought. It's, it's drilled into my mind. Having somehow survived D-Day and the Battle of the Bulge, Lupus Suarez was walking down this very street when he had a homecoming he's never forgotten. His mother and father were stunned to see their son in uniform on crutches coming towards them. Mama, that's my Lupe. A migrant farm worker, retired shop foreman, and former city councilman, Suarez is taking being the parade grand marshal in stride. Still, he admits. It's probably a privilege uh, for my family. In New Braunfels, Jesse de Goyado, KSAT 12 News. All right, I know he's humble, but he's still a hero. Thank you, Lupe. A wounded veteran able to turn her life around after suffering a traumatic brain injury while deployed. Marlene Zander was on tour in Iraq when her vehicle was struck by an IED, causing her a brain injury that induced 10 to 15 seizures a day. She struggled to integrate back into civilian life, but it was thanks to military nonprofits like Semper Fi helped her get back on her feet and help manage her seizures. She later developed her own business, a mobile personal training service called Fitness Brigade. It helps people stuck at home and kids live healthier lives. It like amplified my my mental health, my physical health. You know, I started to feel better about me developing camaraderie with others or getting back into, you know, having that friendship with others or understanding others that are like minded with with me. She says helping others has helped her find a new purpose in life. Happening tomorrow, the annual San Antonio Veterans Day Parade. That parade starts at 11 in the morning and it begins at Milam Park before marching through downtown. The parade being hosted by the U.S. Military Veterans Parade Association. Coming up tonight at 630, we're going to have Stephanie Guerra in studio with us. She's about to tell us about more Veterans Day events going on in the city during Puro Picks. To commemorate Veterans Day, restaurant chains, stores, businesses in the San Antonio area also offering freebies, deals, discounts for vets and active duty military members. You can find more details on KSAT.com or you can just scan that QR code there. Now we turn to the weather and a big change from just a few days ago, but we knew that we would be getting on this roller coaster, Mia. Yes, certainly so. Of course, it is that time of year where we typically see these big temperature swings and changes. Today, post cold front, we've had plenty of cloud cover in place, holding temperatures even the 50s in a lot of locations and just isolated showers. That's still going to be the case as we head into any evening plans. By the way, here's a look at some observed rainfall totals in and around Bear County since yesterday when we saw more widespread rain and move in last night and early this morning about half of an inch here in San Antonio efficiently as you make it your way farther up to the northwest northwestern Bear County a few spots at an inch or just over that up in Holota stretching over to Bernie and even closer to Medina Lake definitely needing some rain there right now we are pretty quiet here in San Antonio monitoring a few light showers some sprinkles starting to get going off to our southwest in between Crystal City and Dilly that's going to be the isolated activity we monitor throughout the remainder of this Friday Looking ahead to this weekend, cool, cloudy, just an isolated chance for a shower tomorrow. Increasing, though, by the second half of the day on Sunday. Still plenty to talk about. We'll get you all those details in the latest version of our future cast coming up a little bit later on, Steve. Thank you, Mia. Let's check out traffic right now. We're going to go near downtown. This is actually I-10 as it winds towards downtown. And you can see especially the eastbound lanes of I-10 where the two upper and lower ramps come together. And as it winds into the heart of downtown, very slow going on this Friday. The westbound lanes, not too bad. Let's go to the state capitol now where Governor Greg Abbott signed a bill banning COVID-19 vaccine mandates for private employers. Senate Bill 7 prohibits private companies from talking against employees who do not want to get the vaccine. 
The bill would allow people to file a complaint with the Texas Workforce Commission to investigate alleged retaliation. Employers would then face up to a $50,000 fine for each violation. Cool to kind of see it full circle come back with my own kid. <laughs> Still ahead on the news at 6, the San Antonio Zoo getting a historic donation. How much money will be going to the zoo and how the funds will preserve habitats for future generations? Exciting of details. It's next. Here's what we're working out for you tonight on the night beat. The Military City USA parade draws thousands to the Alamo City every year on Veterans Day. It wasn't always like that. Hear how this San Antonio tradition first started. A champion on the field forced away from the game by a devastating diagnosis, but the six year olds team and community stepping up to help. The biggest donation in 109 years to the San Antonio Zoo announced today $10 million being donated by the Ralston Family Charitable Foundation. Sarah Costa tells us how this money will help transform the zoo's entrance and the zoo's future gorilla exhibit, but more importantly, transform what it means to our community. A $10 million donation will expand the zoo by more than two acres, creating the country's biggest gorilla habitat, an event center, and a new entry. This is all made possible by the Ralston Family Charitable Foundation. Shannon Ralston, the founder of the foundation, says this is all about families spending more time together. I brought my own sons here when I was younger. They were much younger. And um, those were great memories. And I want to make sure future generations have that opportunity. An opportunity to create memories, like zoo members who used to visit with their parents and now. Cool to kind of see it full circle. Come back with my own kid. <laughs> so he loves monkeys, so that's going to be really cool to He's to see the gorillas. I mean, that was his favorite part of today was seeing the monkeys. So I'm sure if he saw some gorillas, he would go crazy. But that's just, that's his monkey sound. <laughs> I'm so excited to see the gorillas because when I first started as a docent, we had two gorillas, but they were in the front of the zoo in a relatively small area. And to see what is planned for the future, I just hope I can stay around long enough to see it. It gives children a sense of community when they see their city and then they see something new coming to them. It gives them a sense of belonging to their community. The entrance of the zoo will be complete by December of this year. The gorilla habitat and that event center will be done by 2025. From the San Antonio Zoo, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Exciting plans there. All right, No Shave November underway and some of us at KSAT growing out our beards for a good cause. We are raising money to fight cancer for 12 cancer foundations exact. If you would like to donate, just scan the QR code on your screen to learn more. Last year, by the way, KSAT raised more than $30,000 thanks to our viewers to benefit cancer research, treatment, and prevention. If you're looking for another way to give this holiday season, here's an easy way that's so needed. From now through December 12th, you can donate a pair of new shoes or socks to the Share the Shoes campaign through the organization Zapatos. You can drop off those donations at any of the seven SAPD substations. Shoes and socks for toddlers to adult sizes are needed. We have all this information on KSAT.com. Checking out the weather situation outside, it is sub 60. Yes. I mean, I, I was I was kind of, you know, making fun of some of my colleagues that had the turtlenecks and the jackets <laughs> on already. But you know, it is a change. It sure is. Yep. And that's going to be the big story along with increasing rain chances as we head into the upcoming weekend. We saw the cold front move through yesterday. It did bring with it some decent rain to a good chunk of South Central Texas last night and early this morning. And today, while most of us have been quiet, we've had the cloud cover in place, the cooler air funneling in, and this is a look at temperatures right now. Sub 60 degrees, as Steve was saying, across many locations. 61, though, just off to our south in Pleasanton, 60 degrees. 
on the dot out west in Uvalde. We're sitting at 58 here in San Antonio, 54 in Comfort, 58 as well up I-35 in New Braunfels. So if you are stepping out for any Friday evening plans, do plan on taking the extra layer with you. Still holding on to that cloud cover, so temperatures are going to be slow to fall, but they will gradually fall into the mid 50s here officially in town by about 9 p.m. and into the 11 o'clock hour as well. Just an isolated chance for a shower possible. Mainly light rain, probably a good idea to at least keep the umbrella in the car should you briefly need to use it. And that's going to be the trend again as we head into Veterans Day tomorrow here in the Alamo City. Cloudy skies in general for the most part. It will be chilly tomorrow morning. 53 degrees at 7 a.m. 59 at lunchtime. And then we've got that forecast high pointed around 61 by about 4 to 5 o'clock. Just a 20 to 30 percent potential tomorrow and into Saturday night. But notice big changes work back in for the back half of the weekend. That is going to continue Sunday night and into Monday as well. Widespread chance for rain works back into South Central Texas. So let's go ahead and time out that setup here over the next couple of days. Right now here in San Antonio, we are quiet. Nothing showing up on your authority radar. But as we take a look farther off to the southwest, approaching the I-35 corridor near Pearsall as well, well as Dilly. This is the isolated light rain that we're going to be monitoring here throughout the remainder of the evening. Just passing through the Big Wells area that gradually working its way farther up to the northeast. It's not going to be for everybody this evening and tomorrow, but we are expecting a few more light showers and some pockets of sprinkles. This is the big picture. Some more rain up to the Panhandle near Lubbock as well as Amarillo. Here's the front that moved through our area yesterday. Now it's just off the Gulf Coast, bringing widespread rain off to our southeast. That's going to gradually work eastward. Here's your future cast tomorrow morning. Again, most of us are quiet. It will be chilly. It will be cloudy. Maybe a few light showers off to our south. As we head into the late afternoon and evening hours, 3, 4, 5 o'clock tomorrow, better chances of finding some spotty light rain along and south of the Highway 90 corridor. That will be the case into tomorrow night. But but then watch what happens here as we head into your Sunday by six o'clock isolated here in San Antonio, but starting to see more of that scattered to even widespread rain working into our far southwestern counties near Uvalde as well as Catula by lunchtime. And then that continues to work its way farther up to the north by late Sunday afternoon and into Sunday night. We'll see an area of low pressure approach from the west that's going to give us some more upper level energy to keep those widespread rain chances is going into the Sunday night and Monday morning drive time. Then as we see that low pressure system swing across the state and depart off to the east, rain chances taper off by Monday evening. Notice temperature is still very cool Sunday and into Monday. Keep the umbrella and the jacket handy. And then after that, if you're looking for some sunshine, it looks to bring back some of that blue skyness into the forecast on Tuesday. Temperatures responding by warming up into the low 70s by the middle of next week. Something tells me by Tuesday we're going to be ready for the blue sky. I think so too. It's going to be a little dreary, especially Sunday night and into Monday. Thank you, Mia. Yep. All right. Doesn't matter if it's rainy, it's cloudy, what the temperatures are, it's playoff time. That's right. We're ready for some high school football. It started last night, first round of the playoffs Thursday night. Now it's going to continue tonight with a big Friday night, including our road trip, which features Divine versus Lago Vista. It's a Class 5A by district contest. Mary Rominger is live with more. And the Spurs know they need to play better defense starting tonight. We got it coming up. The first round of the high school football playoffs kicked off last night with by district playing. Several teams saw their dream of winning state stay alive. The Steel Knights beat Brandeis 42-14 and other area winners include Hondo, Jordanton, Harlan, Davenport and Bernie. Now you can find last night's scores online at BigGameCoverage.com. Tonight we have at least 13 games on the schedule, including our two game road trip. It stops in Seguin and New Braunfels Canyon. Let's go live to Matador Stadium in Seguin, where Mary Rominger is waiting for kickoff between Divine and Lago Vista, Mary. 
Well, this is a matchup between two programs in completely different situations. On one side of the field, Lago Vista, a well-old machine, is coming off of a regional final appearance last year. And on the other side, Divine is just trying to get over the hump. The War Horses are consistently in the playoff picture, but have struggled to get past the first round. This group of Divine seniors, though, is devoted to changing that narrative tonight. It's not that these kids haven't left it all out there. You know, the thing about them is, you know, we're not ever going to be the biggest. We're not ever going to be the fastest. You know, our, our deal is we have to be disciplined and we have to be tough and we have to just go out there and play hard. And that's what Divine Football has been uh, since I've been here. The seniors last year were very outgoing and wanting to go past the first round. And unfortunately, we weren't allowed to do that. So... Seeing them not be able to do that, I'm, I'm hoping that the seniors this year will get together and get this game going and hopefully win it. It would mean the world just to get out of the first round. And uh, these past four years have been probably the best years of my life playing football at Divine, and I'm just proud to be a war horse. Sam Guardiola, who you just heard from, switched from running back to quarterback this offseason. That's just one adjustment Divine has needed to make to be in the position it is now. And here is our route. Divine and Lago Vista squaring off in Seguin, then New Braunfels Canyon taking on Cedar Park. And the crowd is just beginning to trickle in. And, of course, we'll show you how both of these games unfold tonight. Larry. Thank you very much, Mary. And this is our game of the week right here. Six and four veterans memorial versus nine to one Burbank Bulldogs. 7 p.m. at SAISD Sports Complex. Catch all the highlights on the night beat. After two games on the road, the Spurs are now play two straight at home against the Timberwolves tonight, followed by the Heat on Sunday. The Spurs have dropped three straight to the Raptors, Pacers, and the Knicks, and they allowed an average of 133 points per game in those losses. That's not Spurs basketball at all. The Spurs hope to improve their defense tonight against the T-Wolves. I think uh, our aggressiveness on the defensive end needs to pick up for sure. Um, I think early in the year and in training camp and everything, you know, we are super aggressive. Um, you know, bringing the fight to people, and now recently, you know, we haven't really had that. So I've been lacking a little bit. So I think if we can get back to that, um, you know, we'll see, you know, it go back to where we were at, um, you know, at the beginning of the season. Spurs will host the Timberwolves tonight at 7, an in-season tournament game. And earlier today, Rudy Gobert, who is from France, said that he feels like a dad when watching Victor Wimanyama play on the court, who's also from France, of course. Okay. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. Go Spurs, go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, words, just win, Spurs. We'll be right back.